Hi people, welcome back to the tutorial on how to hack Metasploitable 2. I hope you're enjoying the tutorial so far. Um, I've got a brilliant episode lined up for today. Um, today we're going to look at port 15900-5900. VNC appears to be the service running on it. Quick heads up, uh, what does it stand for? Well, VNC stands for Virtual Network Computing. Uh, this technology enables the sharing of a copy of one computer screen display with another computer over a network connection. Um, the technology is typically used by people wanting to monitor or control a computer from a remote location rather than just accessing uh, shared files. The following but limited list of software packages um, provide VNC functionality. We've got Tight VNC, which is very popular, uh, Real VNC, um, TeamViewer as well. And um, this software consists of a client user interface plus a server that manage connection to clients and send desktop images. The VNC protocol itself, which is based on a protocol called RFB, Remote Frame Buffer, is very simple. And it just consists of transmitting one graphic primitive from client um, to server, or sorry, from server to client. As always, our methodology remains the same here as we're going to use the Metasploit framework to take advantage of this service. First, let's confirm that VNC is indeed running uh, on port 5900. As you can actually see from an earlier scan using Nmap, that we've got VNC running on our port. Alongside it, we've also got a version which is 3.3. So the next thing to do is just to open a new tab and type in MSF console. I've already done that, and you can actually see the Metasploit shell um, open here. Um, if you're familiar with the methodology as well, uh, you've got to make sure that you've got a PostgreSQL Post service up and running. As you can actually see, um, the status suggests it's active. So once you've done that, um, you just got to carry a quick search um, within Metasploit for this vulnerability. Uh, three point. Right, um, we appear to have um, three modules matching our search. The one we're going to be using it's the it's the first one the VNC login, so yeah, okay. And then we just find out what the options are for configuration. Okay, it's quite a few to go through. Some of it it's uh, built in by default, so we're going to leave the brute forces there. Um, usually, people tend to lower it to maybe free, not to alert intrusion detection systems. And the pass file seems to be using a, a word list built into Metasploits. Um, we're going to be configuring a remote host. Yeah, so. Right, that's the IP address of a vulnerable machine. Um, the remote port seems to be set already. 5,900, that's correct. Stop on success. Um, let's, um, let's configure as well. Essentially, we're just toggling it to, to true, so. Partly, really, I mean, as you can actually see, we don't want the, the exercise to carry on forever. As soon as it comes across the valid credential, or one of the valid credentials, it should stop. Um, the username will leave you as that, and the, the verbal set to true, and, and I think we're pretty much done. So we can actually run uh, the module. I think what the module will do is just going to carry out some sort of VNC login sweep. So let's run it. And indeed, so um, the auxiliary module has led us to a successful um, login credential and has returned a password, which is in fact a um, password here. So let's see if we can log into the VNC server with these credentials. So uh, um, fortunately for us, Kali Linux has the viewer functionality built into it. So if we use the command VNC viewer, we prompted for a password for which we were its password. There you have it. So um, as you can see, the credentials have worked. We have a remote desktop session that pops up inside um, our attacking machine Kali. So to prove that's the point, we can indeed try the stateful commands to prove that we are in the metasploitable virtual machine. So um, if we try, um, who am I? 
There you are. So it actually demonstrates that we've got the highest level of privilege. So uh, we are root. Um, you can find out what the host name is. And um, we are Um That's the name of the host machine. That is just one way of controlling the remote machine. So as you can see, we've got the highest level of privilege and we can do virtually everything. Um, you can do, for example, trying to extract information such as password and Linux is stored into the etc shadow uh, file. So I mean, we can just run the screening command. There you have it. So we've got um, every sort of password in, um, which associated with user accounts in the system. Um, you can identify the particular one you're interested in. Say, for example, you're interested about the the, the, the root's password, then uh, you can just use the following commands. And uh, you've got the, the the user with the high level of privilege passwords be in encrypted form. I mean, there are many tools that you can actually use. First, you're trying to identify the type of encryption that's been used for it, as well as um, decrypting it. Um, when my job is done now, I hope that you have enjoyed this episode. Any question, then please don't hesitate to stick in the comments. This tutorial is done. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.